Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sipniewski. Thank you so much for popping by my channel. Today, we'll be going over the audio settings inside of LumaFusion. But before we jump into that, I just wanted to give you a few quick tips on the best way to fix your audio. And the best way to fix your audio is to not have to fix your audio. So when you hit record, make sure that you're capturing that audio right the first go around. If you're working with a mixer and a microphone, do a little gain staging. If you're working with a microphone that plugs directly into your camera, check the settings, do an audio test, and make sure that you're not clipping your camera's internal preamps. And in case you don't understand anything of what I just said, that's okay, because one of my future videos is going to be on all of that, so look for that coming up. Okay, well, let's go ahead and jump into LumaFusion. When I'm working with audio with a particular video, what I like to do is detach it from the clip. So highlight the clip you wanna work with and just tap the audio symbol at the bottom of the toolbar and that will quickly detach the audio of the clip. Let's double tap on the audio and that will bring us to the audio settings window. So as you can see, this is a very bare bones audio window. This is about all of the graph that you're going to see. We're not going to have a layout of any particular frequency. Uh, you know, I wish the setup was a little nicer or a little different, but it's not, and that's okay because this is not a DAW. This is for working and editing video, not for working with and editing audio. So being that this is bare bones is really good enough because the only thing that you really want to perform with this is to just basically clean up the audio for your videos. You're not going to be mastering music in LumaFusion. So what I'm going to do is walk you through each filter and give you a brief description of what each one of those filters can do and some of the different sound effects that we can achieve with them. So let's jump into the first one and this is the bandpass filter. Now you'll notice that there's two sliders on here, center frequency and bandwidth. So this center frequency slider, wherever we have this positioned, it is going to cut the frequencies to the left and the right of the slider. Now with the bandwidth, what that is, is I let me show you a picture up here to represent what the bandwidth is. The larger that you have this bandwidth, the more of a spread you're going to get. And the tighter that you have it down, if you have it down to 100 cents, that is going to pinpoint that wave. So it's going to focus on a certain frequency. When you open it up and expand it, that is going to cover a lot more of the surrounding frequencies as well. I hope that was a good description. Anyway, this is really, I would say a specialty filter. I never really use this in any of my videos. This would be something that you would use if you were looking to do a certain sound effect. So let's go ahead and put on the audio so that you can see what I'm talking about. See how it sounds like an old time radio or something? Or, oh, I already have a limiter on here. Let me get rid of that. Let's go ahead and just change this up a little bit because what we can do is make this sound like uh, if someone is speaking behind a wall, like a muffled type of audio. Cool. I'm making this video for a few different reasons. One, I need to get some audio samples because my next video... And that's what you can do with the bandpass filter. Like I said, I don't often use that one. Next one is delay. And that's exactly what it is. This is going to be a delay on the audio. So what you can do with this is have an echo effect or you can make it sound like you're standing in an auditorium or a big empty space. And that's really all I would use this particular one for. I mean, the, the top three are really not something you're going to use very often. So let's go ahead and show you what this is. I'm going to do the audio I'm going to do tutorial in the audio audio tutorial. So you hear that's just a really large, long echo. If you wanted to cut down the echo, we would just pull this down and pull down the delay time. And let's hear how it sounds now. The EQ hour audio, how do we do audio ducking and the recommended settings for that. So you hear how that sounds like you're talking in an auditorium or a bathroom or something like that. So let's go ahead and dump that one out too. Next one is distortion and distortion is exactly how it sounds. It's going to completely distort the audio and there are already individual presets set here. So let's go ahead and just scroll through some of the different ones. I'll play a few. 
Not wonderful, right? Terrible, right? Let's go down here. This is the pop voice lavalier. You would just have to scroll through some of these different presets and see if there's really anything in here that you could possibly use. And of course, if you don't like anything in the presets, you can always come down here and dial in the different sliders to change up that distorted audio. Moving on, we come to the dynamic processor. Now what you can do with this dynamic processor, and really this is the only thing that I use the dynamic processor for. No, actually that's not true. I use also the master gain in this particular dynamic processor as well. So let's go ahead and listen to what the gain slider can do for your audio. Audio samples, because my next video, I'm going to audio tutorial. Now I know it's deceiving because you think gain equals volume, but it really, really doesn't. The gain is more of a signal strength to sharpen the signal strength. It is not the volume, so let's not confuse the two. But I will sometimes bump up that master gain in the dynamic processor. Another thing that I really like the dynamic processor for is that we can put a gate on our speech. So let's go ahead and go down to the presets here. And let's listen to the hard gate. So what a hard gate is going to do is basically uh, go through your audio in any place where you're not speaking and it recognizes that you're not speaking, there should be silence, that basically closes down that audio signal to zero it out. So that's why it's called a gate. It basically closes a gate on your audio to keep that area silent. So this is helpful if while you're doing speaking, you take a lot of deep breaths or just breathing in general, this can help cut a lot of that out. So let's go to an area where I'm taking some breaths and you can see how this gate works. How do we EQ our audio? How do we do audio ducking and the recommended settings for that? And how can we polish up audio that's maybe not so wonderful? So that will be coming up. And while we're on the top, maybe this won't be translating well into the audio for you, but whenever I'm taking a breath, there is definitely, you know, the, the volume definitely comes down. And we can also control how quickly that volume comes up and comes down by using the attack time and the release time. I was happy with the way that sounded, so I would just go ahead and leave it there. Actually, these presets are really good. If you felt like that hard gate was too harsh, you could dial it down to a medium gate and to a light gate as well. But I think they did a really good job with these presets in the dynamic processor. All right, let's go ahead and dump this out. Okay, moving on, we come to the high pass filter. What we use the high pass filter for is to cut out certain low end frequencies. So this is only going to allow those high end frequencies to pass through and cut out some of the bassiness or the lower end rumble that you might have in your audio. Another good filter as well to do some sound effects. So my voice is rather bassy. So I could put this filter on and it would really add some clarity and treble to my vocals. So let's go ahead and, and give a quick listen. And how can we polish up audio that's maybe not so wonderful? So that will be coming up. And while we're on the topic of audio, I figured I would go ahead and do a review of this microphone that I've had for a few weeks. So that really can clean up the audio and make it a little more bright. This is another great filter if you want to do additional sound effects. This is the Pop Voice Lavalier Microphone. It's on Amazon for a whopping 11 bucks right now. And I've listened to it. I actually did another video with this. No one could tell the difference. Everybody just assumed. Another sound effect that would mimic the sound of someone being on the phone or being yelled at over the phone. So let's go ahead and throw that away. Moving on, we come to the high shelf filter. Now, the high shelf filter is a lot like the high pass filter where it's going to add some treble and clarity to your audio but it's different in the way that it affects the frequencies that it's working with. So you'll notice here the high shelf filter, um, there's a cutoff frequency slider and a gain slider. Let's go back to that high pass filter and you see the cutoff frequency and a resonance slider. Why does the high shelf filter have a gain slider? 
So when you're working with those particular frequencies and you're putting it more of like a shelf formation, this can either drop the gain or increase the gain of that frequency. So we want to be able to control that gain by dialing in. So let's go ahead and listen to what the high shelf filter sounds like. And I, I do like it. I really think it adds a really nice presence to the high end of audios. We polish up audio that's maybe not so wonderful. So that will be coming up. And while we're on the topic of audio, I figured I would... I do think that sounds really nice. So it gives your audio a really nice boost at the high end, especially if you're someone like me that has a little bit of a deeper voice. This really is going to change the entire dynamic of your audio if you really want to clean it up and make it sound more professional. Moving on, we come to the low pass filter. So as you would imagine, the low pass filter is exactly the opposite of the high pass filter. This is only going to allow the low end frequencies to pass through and cut out those higher end frequencies. So if you're looking to cut back on maybe some tinniness to audio, this would be a really good filter for you to use. So let's go ahead and just hit play and see what this sounds like. I actually did another video with this. No one could tell the difference. Everybody just assumed it was my Deity microphone. And I think the audio from this is totally amazing. So listen, I have YouTube playing in my office all day long. It's on my iPad. So if you wanted to really dial back the audio, if you have somebody that has a really bright voice and you just, you know, you kind of just want to dial that back a little bit, this would be a really good filter for you to use. Moving on, we come to the low shelf filter. And as you would imagine, it's exactly the opposite of the high shelf filter. So this is going to allow only the low end frequencies to pass through and that's going to cut out those higher end frequencies, and it's going to do that shelving formation so we can control the gain there. 